when he was still a fugitive from Saul, the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men, helpers in the war. So there's going to be three different places that these men come to David while he's hiding, and they're revealed to us in this chapter. One of the places is at Ziglag, and that's in the southern part of the land. And in verse 8 we read, Others joined David at the stronghold in the wilderness, and we learn from chapter 11 of Chronicles that this is at Adullam, another hiding place that David had there in the wilderness. And then we also learn from verse 22 that uh, there were a number of others that came to him while he was at Hebron. And uh, this is at a location that is there on one of the highest sections of uh, the mountain range in southern uh, uh, Israel. And so this is spread out, this chapter is spread out over a period of time, and yet it is describing all these men that come to David to make up his army while he is there in hiding. And it's not a uh, place that is attractive to these men. They don't come to him because it's some kind of a resort, but they're coming to him because of a faith that they have in him and a commitment that they're ready to make to him. And I want us to see that there are some wonderful things in this chapter that we need to learn. We read that at that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army, like the army of God. I think that as we look at David's army, that perhaps we could really rename this section because it's really like the great army of God. And we realize that um, estimate that we as Christians are sometimes likened unto soldiers. For instance, in 2 Timothy 2, you therefore must endure hardness as a good soldier of, Je of Jesus Christ. For no one engageth in the warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who called him as a soldier. So the passage in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And Romans 15, 4 reminds us that these things that were written afore are written for our learning. So what I want us to gather this morning is that as we see the description of these men that come to make up David's army, that they also have a good application to you and me as we come to be a part of the Lord's army today. Now, in verse 8, we're going to read about the Gadites coming to him. We read, And of the Gadites, from the children of the Gadites, there came to David in the stronghold, in the wilderness, mighty men of valor, men trained for war, who could handle shield and spear, and whose faces were like the faces of lions, and they were as swift as the gazelles on the mountains. Here are some men that is coming to David then that are described uh, from uh, the tribe of uh, Gad, and Gad was over on the eastern side of the Jordan River. And uh, I want us to notice that as they come to David, they have to cross the Jordan River. They have to cross through that valley. And we're going to say some more about that in just a minute. But they come to David, and we see that they have separated themselves to David. That is, they have committed themselves. There's a lot involved in this word separated because it speaks then of a commitment that they're making that they are pulling themselves out from being committed to Saul and now then committing themselves to David and to be a part of, of David's army. They're drawn to David's standard just as we as Christians are drawn to the standard of the Lord. And that means that if we're drawn to the Lord that we need to be leaving the camp of Satan behind. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 we read, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And he says, and I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my children. So as we come to the Lord, it means that we're separating ourselves from the world. 
We ought not to let the world become our standard for the way that we're going to live or for the way that we're going to dress or for the way that we are, are going to be spending our time. We need to be dedicated and committed to the Lord as these Gadites came to him. They were sanctified. That is, they were set apart to do this. And this is what the Lord says about the church. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. Now, I hope this morning that every saint that is here is sanctified to the Lord, that you have committed yourself. You're ready to come out from the world and to belong to the Lord. And if you're going to belong to the Lord then, we need to live the way that the Lord wants us to live and not to live like the world. Now, also he said of these guys that they were fit for the battle. And that word fit also is translated that they were trained or that they were prepared for the battle. So David's soldiers came to him. They were armed and they were trained in how to use these weapons that they had. As the Lord's army that comes to him today ought to be committed to him and ought to be trained in using the weapons that the Lord has given to us. We're told, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand and fight. Now, if we're going to be Christians in the Lord's army, we are to have our loins girded about with truth. We're to have on the breastplate of righteousness and right doing. We are to have our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, ready to take the gospel with us wherever our feet go. And that we are then to have the shield of faith where we can quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And we're to take the helmet of salvation, and we're to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Our weapon, he says, is the Word of God, which like a sword that could cut through the joints into the marrow of the bone, he says the Word of God is quick or alive and active and, and able to penetrate even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. That is, it can reveal and make known our very heart, it can shine upon our heart. And then he speaks of the importance of praying and watching as being part of the Lord's army. Now, as these Gadites came to Jesus, they were separated, they were fit for battle, but also we see this, that they were not ready to let anything stand between their way. Because we read here in uh, verse 14, uh, this of them, these sons of, of Gedi were captains of the army. And uh, verse 15, these are the ones who crossed the Jordan in the first month when it was overflowing its banks. And they put to flight all those in the valleys, both to the east and to the west. About how that they had to make this journey, then they had to cross the Jordan River. And as they came down into the Jordan Valley here, they uh, met with some opposition on both sides of the river. They met with opposition. And so they had to fight their way to David to get to him. Now, what's interesting about this is that the river, you know, is only about 40 to 60 feet wide. Normally wouldn't be any great difficulty to cross. But at this time of the year, the Scriptures tell us that it was the first of the month at flood season, at a time when it becomes very dangerous. This particular picture was taken back in the uh, late 1930s before the, there was any dams placed on the Jordan River and it was very dangerous at the time of the flood season. And so they were men who weren't going to be easily put off. They were ready to fight the way to David, ready to overcome all kind of ob obstacles. Now the question is this. How intent are you upon being part of the Lord's army? What is it that you are let standing between you and God on Sunday night? It's almost as if that you have said, Lord, I want to be on your army, and you started out, but on Sunday night you've turned around and gone the other way. You don't want to be a part of his army on Wednesday night. What is it that you're letting stand in your way? What kind of a soldier are you for the Lord if you're letting that happen to you? But let's also notice that those of Judah came to David... We read in verse uh, about them and uh, also uh, earlier in uh, verse 18 that from the tribe of Judah they come 
and uh, they are ready. They are trained. Are they equipped? The children of Judah that bear shield and sword were 6,800 ready for the fight, are ready for the war. The margin here in many of the King James versions it says that they were prepared. So they were ready. And uh, they were trained. They brought their equipment with them. They had their, uh, their shields and their swords. How many of you got your sword with you this morning? How many of you are able to look right along with me in First Chronicles chapter 12 and, and look at these verses? It says that they were equipped. You know, one of the, one of the purposes of leaders that God gave to the church in Ephesians 4.12 was for the equipping of the saints. We don't come here to worship, you know, to, to please the elders, but they have a job, they have a duty. They are trying to equip us for the battle. And they really feel that in order for us to be equipped as we should, we need to be in Bible study on Sunday morning and on Wednesday night. They want to get us ready. Can you just imagine these from men from the tribe of Judah coming and saying, well, we're here, but we don't have any weapons. It's just like you going out into through the week to fight against Satan. But you aren't ready because you don't know the Word of God. You haven't prepared yourself and, and steeped yourself in God's Word. They were a prepared people then. But they were from the tribe of Benjamin. They come to David, and we read about them in verse, that other men from the tribes of Benjamin and Judah also came to David in the stronghold, that is there, Abdullam. And then look down in verse 18, and I, I love this. Here is their spokesman for them. David has some real questions about them because if you'll remember, Saul, King Saul, was from the tribe of Benjamin. And here are all these men coming up, showing up now then from the tribe of Benjamin, and David really wonders now, are they just spies? Do I know that you're really here honestly wanting to follow me? And they make this confession. Yes, David, we're yours. We are with you, son of Jesse. Now, I think by your presence this morning that you're saying to the Lord, yes, Lord, we are yours. We're making this commitment to you, Lord. We're ready to follow you. Are you really ready? Are you really ready to surrender yourself to him? That's what they were saying. David, we surrender all to you. We're coming to be yours. We belong to you. We're on your side, David. And notice that they were even willing now then to forsake Saul, who was their, their, their kinsman, verse 29, the son of Benjamin, Saul's kinsman, 3,000. For until now, the greater part of them have, had kept their allegiance to the house of Saul. It may mean that you'll have to leave someone in your family behind if you want to be a Christian. It certainly means that you've got to leave the house of Satan behind if you really want to be a Christian. Are you really ready to make this commitment and this surrender to Christ to be a part of his army? You know, the Lord's army's got to be just like this. And then there's from those from of Simeon that come to David. Of valor, fit for war, verse 25 uh, tells us. Men of courage, men who were virtuous, they come to David. We need men of courage today who will stand up for the Lord and people who are ready to be virtuous for the Lord. Came from the tribe of Ephraim to David. Verse 30 we read, Of the sons of Ephraim, 28,800 mighty men of valor, they were courageous, famous men throughout their father's house, or as one translation says, mighty men of valor, famous men, are men uh, who were brave warriors, men of names, says one of the uh, translations. Men of names. It's talking about here was some men of great influence that were coming to David. Now, how are you using your influence? Men of influence coming to him, 
men who were well known, ready to let their influence be used for Christ. What kind of an influence are you for your family? You know, I, I know that a good many of you that are coming just for the worship service are people who, when you were young, you went to Bible study and to worship. What kind of influence are you having now? What is it that you're teaching now to, to these young people around us? Are you using your influence saying to them, well, you know, Bible study isn't really important after all? And especially if you have children, I think it is an awesome responsibility upon you to see that you get your children in Bible study Sunday morning and Wednesday night. What in the world are you saying to Christ if you absent yourself and your children from a time when we can come together and sharpen our swords, prepare our minds and hearts to live for the Lord, and commit ourselves to Him, what kind of a half-hearted soldier are you trying to be for him? Well, also they come from the tribe of Issachar. What does, the, what does it say about verse 32? And the children of Issachar, men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren at their command. It says that Issachar were men of understanding the times. I think that they were able to see, you know, our times call for a man like David to be our king. We don't need this man Saul. Uh, look what a, a crazy man he is. Look what all he's doing and how God is so displeased with him. God has rejected him. They were people who understood the time. Yes, God wants someone like David and they knew what to do, and they did it. They left Saul's realm of influence, and they came down to follow David. Now, friends, can you understand the times? Can you see where our lives ought to be committed, where we ought to be living? Are you ready to do it? They did. This is the kind of army that David had. Not just men that understood it and saw it, but they did it. Now, if you're part of the Lord's army, are you really going to do it? Are you really going to live like you should? Men who understood the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. And then there's men, Zebulon, that came to David. Oh, Zebulon, just went forth to battle, expert in war, with all kind of instruments of war, 50,000 which could keep rank and they were not of double heart. Oh, I love these from the tribe of Zebulon. How we need soldiers in the church line. But really, to be honest, we need to look at all those verses, and we just won't take the time this morning. What he has to say about Naphtali, Dan, Asher, Reuben, Gad, Manasseh on the eastern side. He has this to say roughly about them. He says they were men who could keep rank. That is, they could march shoulder to shoulder. You see, one of the ways that they fought in that day is they would line up in a great line. They'd put their shields out in front of them, and their shields would just be a, a wall of defense, and they would have their spear right there, and they would just march forward on the enemy, shoulder to shoulder. And if, if one of them fell, you know, and it made a breach in their line, that, that, was, that was terrible. Usually they had someone back there ready to take it, but, but, you know, isn't this the way that we ought to be in the Lord's army standing shoulder to shoulder in the work that's got to be done? The elders were out like some work about the pews this morning. Wouldn't it be great if we could stand shoulder to shoulder in doing this work? Doing the work that the Lord has called upon us to go forth in rank, shoulder to shoulder, with His undivided heart. That means with singleness of purpose. Or as the NIV says, with undivided loyalty. Can you just imagine what kind of an army we could have for the Lord here in Rogersville if every one of us here this morning would have undivided loyalty in serving the Lord? That is, on Sunday night, we wouldn't have to ask, about well, what am I going to do t tonight? Am I going to stay home or am I going to go and do this? Oh, there wouldn't be any question about it. We know where we're going to be. We're going to be right there with the saints, encouraging and supporting them. 
and praising the name of God. And it says that they were expert in their weapons. You know, years ago, it was uh, generally opinion in the communities where we live that people in the churches of Christ, you know, that they knew the Bible, that they knew the Word of God, that they could be counted upon for uh, giving you an understanding, you know, about the Scriptures, the Old Testament, the New. I'm afraid that that's not the reputation that we have in the community anymore. And why is it? Because we're not coming to Sunday school like we used to. You're probably not. What about Wednesday night? And you see, if you're in part of that number that the elders were talking about that, that was not here for Sunday school this morning or not here for, Sunday, or for, for a Bible study on Wednesday night, your weapon's dull. You're, you don't know how to use it. And if you're going to be part of the Lord's army, you've got to be fit and prepared and ready for battle. That's why the elders want to encourage you and urge you to come and be present for Bible study. Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. It, when you look at this entire chapter, you see that every one of the tribes of Israel is named. David had men coming to him from all of the tribes. Wonderful thing about the Lord's church is that we're, the church is made up just, not just of us people here at Rogersville, but around the world, all across the con this country and all around the world. The sun doesn't set on the Lord's kingdom today. There were these Gadites that were fit and separated. The men of Judah who were ready, who were equipped. Those who from Benjamin who chose the right side. We're yours, David. We belong to you. There were those who had courage and virtue. Men who were using their influence. Men who understood the times and who knew what Israel ought to do and did it. And men with an undivided loyalty. But as we read down in verse 38, if you've got your Bible open there, look down in verse 38, because this army that came to David had one purpose. They weren't out there, you know, to enjoy the sun. They weren't some of them coming to do one thing and some coming to do another. They were all united in their purpose. And that purpose was, in verse 38, that with oneness of heart they came to make David king. We've come together this morning and there's really one basic purpose, you know, to praise God, serve Him, to go to heaven, to be on the Lord's team, to be part of His army. They came there to David to make him king. Well, the Lord is recruiting soldiers for His army today. If you're not part of His army, you know, you, could be, you need to understand the kind of army that He wants the kind of commitment that he's calling forth from you. Not a divided heart, not a half heart, but a totally committed full heart. And will you make Christ the king of your life? Will you make him king and serve him? If you're ready to become a part of the Lord's army, we encourage you this morning that you can come and be baptized into Christ for the mission of your of your sins and be a part of his kingdom. We give you this invitation to come right now while we stand and sing this hymn.